If you want to go camping or exploring with your Ford Bronco, you're going to quickly discover that the cargo space in the rear isn't as much as you would like. We know a thing or two about trying to shove all of our adventure and camping gear, as well as our three dogs, in the back of this Bronco. It would be nice to take that large camping reclining chair and not just that tiny folding stool. So the obvious solution is a roof rack. But finding the right roof rack can be a little bit tricky. We had some difficulties trying to find one for my Ford Bronco because it is a two-door and there weren't many that we liked. But luckily the people over at Hook Road sent us one to check out and I'm really excited because I've been wanting a roof rack for a while now. So we're gonna go ahead and get Erica's roof rack installed and then afterwards we're gonna tell you a few important things that you should know and consider before buying your first roof rack for your Ford Bronco. Now we just got the roof rack installed. It was a little bit like Ikea furniture, but you know what? It went together pretty good, feels pretty solid, and I would say it's worth it. I'm totally excited because the last time we tried to go camping, we had the dogs with us and we had to lower the seats, but the dogs needed their space. So we took everything we wanted for the most part, but it was like playing Tetris in the back of the Bronco and uh, was not fun to say the least. So I'm definitely excited about the extra space and I'm excited about the extra opportunities that this roof rack gives us. Like I said, more space, which means we could go shopping for more camping gear. We could also go shopping for lighting or other mounting accessories. And that's what I'm really excited about. Now, when shopping for a roof rack, there's something that you should keep in mind, and that's Ford's recommendation for how much the roof itself can actually hold. Ford recommends that the roof can only hold 110 pounds, and that doesn't sound like a lot because that's the dynamic weight rating, and what dynamic weight rating means is that's when you're moving. So whether you're on the highway or you're off-roading, you're gonna wanna keep that weight relatively low. But if you have a lightweight rooftop tent, you can get to camp, hop up in there, no problem, because that's where the static weight limit comes into play, and that's 450 pounds. So you can definitely load the roof a little bit more when you're not moving. Now, when shopping for a roof rack, you're gonna wanna check the manufacturer's description to see what their weight limiting is. It generally can't go too much higher than Ford's recommendation unless it's somehow mounted differently than the, the stock locations that we did, which were in the front of the Bronco and on the hardtop itself. When shopping for a roof rack, you're gonna to wanna to see if the manufacturer specifies static or dynamic. If they don't, it's probably safe to assume that they mean static if it's a higher weight limit than say over 110 pounds. But for something like the hook rope where it mounts in the factory location, you're gonna be pretty close, if not right on par with Ford's recommendations. Now, before you click that buy button on that roof rack you're looking at, there's a couple more things that you should check out. First, the material. Uh, a commonly available material that you're gonna see is steel as well as aluminum. Now they're both solid choices. The biggest difference is if you go with aluminum, it's gonna be lighter weight, so that means you can carry more gear, but on the flip side, it's gonna cost more. In our case, we actually had a mixture. So the sides were steel, and then the crossbars were aluminum. You also wanna think about what style of roof rack do you want? Now the one that we got from Hook Road is a full size roof rack, which means it is going from the back of the top to the very front of the top. This one actually does allow us to remove the top panels, the two front ones, to be able to still get that open air experience, but not all full racks allow for that, so make sure you're doing your research. There's also what's called a half rack, which only covers the back half of your vehicle. That also allows for you to easily 
lift off those front two panels to still get that open air experience. However, it does take away the amount of cargo that you can actually carry on your vehicle. Now, there are two other unique options when it comes to roof racks, and these are ones I've never heard of before. So Devin, can you explain them to us? Yep. So if you actually have a soft top, you're not out of luck. You can get a roof rack for the soft top Bronco, but it's going to require just a little bit more work. In the front, it's still going to mount to the factory mounting locations. However, in the back, since you don't have a physical roof to mount to, you're going to have to lift up the back of your soft top and bolt it in there. It is still bolt on, no drilling, nothing crazy like that. However, it's just a little bit more work. And then finally, for a more capable roof rack that can hold a little bit more weight, you're going to look for an exoskeleton style roof rack. So that's not just going to mount in the front and on the hardtop itself. It's going to utilize the body of the Bronco in order to hold more weight. Now, another thing that you might not realize if you've never owned a roof rack is the minute that you add something to the top of your vehicle, you're going to be dealing and fighting with wind. So you might get some whistling or just some static wind noise. Uh, we did take this roof rack for a little test drive after we installed it and it wasn't too bad. I've already gotten used to the wind noise. It's only been about three full days since putting it on. Yeah, we did an initial test down the street. And um, I didn't really hear it at yeah. all that day. Um, but I knew that there was a chance when I got to higher speeds, I would hear it. And so when I go down those two streets that had the crosswind, it did get actually quite a bit loud. Even right before we got on the freeway, it got quite loud. You heard it too. Yeah. Um, I originally thought that that was just the high speed sound, sound yeah. but now that we're on the freeway and I'm going right That's now, I'm going around that speed. Yeah, around that. I'm going high. You're fast, and it's like silent. I mean, don't get me wrong. The Bronco is never silent because the the hard top always make it's always made noise. Yeah. But this is about what I'm used to without the roof rack something you should keep in mind and maybe read some reviews about the particular roof rack that you're thinking about purchasing to see what other people say about wind noise. And of course, you also wanna keep in mind that with any roof rack, anytime you pack it with anything, that also creates extra resistance, as well as depending on how you decide to store it, you might actually have straps that might flap around. You definitely just wanna do your research on how to properly secure any of your items, as well as how to really tuck in those straps so you don't get the flapping noises. But you're still gonna have some added extra noise that you're probably not used to. And like Devin said, you wanna look at your reviews. The other things that you wanna keep in mind are the fact that adding weight to the top of your vehicle is going to change your vehicle's center of gravity, meaning that you are gonna feel less stable if you are off-roading or if you are cornering. That's important to keep in mind because especially as you decide to load up all your gear on the top, that's only gonna change the center of gravity even more. The final thing you wanna keep in mind is something that honestly, I feel like a lot of people would be like, well, duh, but there are some people like me that honestly wouldn't even think about that. And that's the fact that adding a roof rack to your vehicle is actually adding height to your vehicle. And not just that, if you decide to pack it, obviously that's more extra height. With all of that, you definitely wanna go ahead and measure your garage's entrance to make sure your vehicle still fits into your garage. And you also wanna be aware of garages with a height limit. Make sure your vehicle can fit into those before you decide to go into one of those garages. So don't let gear limitations hold you back from going out and exploring. And if you are interested in one of the roof racks that we talked about today, Hook Road did hook us up with a 5% discount code. So details and links down below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, especially if you're excited to see our long-term review of this roof rack. I'm super excited to see exactly how much we're able to store up there and how much space it's gonna save on the inside of our vehicle. We'll catch you on the next one, guys.